Our next guests are here to talk, uh, get the word out about a very misunderstood, very frightening condition called PANDAS, and that stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with a Strep Infection. As many as one in every 250 children in the U.S. may suffer from PANDAS, yet it goes undiagnosed and often, our guests say, mistreated. That's why Emmy-nominated filmmaker Tim Sorrell created a documentary about it that will screen tonight in Pittsburgh. We'll talk with him and a PANDAS mom in just a moment, but first, here's a look at that film to help further explain it. Pandas Hell is a really, really dark, scary, and isolated place. Your normal life is suddenly gone overnight. Your friends don't understand why. He was a completely different kid. It was looking at like a, looking at a different kid in the same body. <laughs> There was no way that they could conceive of the possibility that he was not like that two weeks ago. Kids are not supposed to be perfectly healthy one day and then completely tormented and very psychiatrically ill the next. PANDAS, it stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Strep. What happens is you get strep throat, you get symptoms like OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. It's a horrible thing to have and more people should know about it. Kids with PANDAS, they don't leave their bedroom sometimes. They can't leave their house. They've given up playing with their friends. They are psychiatric cripples. It's tragic when a child has PANDAS, people say, your child doesn't have pandas, it doesn't exist, so they give them all kinds of psychiatric drugs, which makes them even worse and worse and worse. Zoloft, Prozac, Lamictal, Cymbalta. When's it gonna kick in? When's it gonna work? And I think now that we look back, that was a big clue. It wasn't working because they were not treating the actual problem. Yes, I think that's irresponsible. Wow, that is, uh, I mean, hard to watch and just incredibly moving. Um, welcome now, the director of that powerful film, Tim Sorrell, along with a panda's mom herself, who also happens to be a doctor who helped treat panda's patients, Elizabeth Spar. Thank you both for being here. I mean, watching that, I got choked up because you're seeing these kids in, in pain. And I can't imagine, um, Do Dr. Spar, mm -hmm. you, you have four children, three of whom yes. have pandas. Yes. And PANS. Tell, tell yes. us more about the disorder. Okay. All right. Um, so um, with PANDAS, what you see um, is this overnight onset of these severe neuropsychiatric symptoms. Um, some of the more common ones are um, obsessive compulsive behaviors, tics, uh, food restriction is another one that a lot of them get. Um, in the case of my 11-year-old uh, son, he was three and a half. One day he was, he was eating great. He would eat anything you put in front of him. Um, he loved to eat chicken feet, for instance. <laughs> and he woke up one day and he just stopped eating, refused oh. to eat. Um, and for the next five years, he weighed 39 pounds. He plummeted in the growth percentiles. Um, went from being an incredibly calm, content, happy, laid back little guy to having these violent meltdowns where he would Threatened to kill himself, threatened to kill us, um, bite and, and kick and spit. As a doctor, you said that you had never heard of this. Correct. Uh, how did you find out about pandas and, and what happens right. now? Right. Yeah, so in the case of um, my son, you know, he had onset during medical school. I went all through medical school and residency trying to find out what was going on. We saw 15 different specialists. Wow. Um, got a whole list of diagnoses, none of them were correct, none of the treatments were working. It wasn't until after I graduated that I became aware of this condition um, and he's finally been able to get help and um, I speak now to other doctors about this and um, there's just such a lack of awareness about it as a diagnosis. Brought on by many believe strep, is that right? Correct. Um, so PANDAS um, is uh, triggered by a strep infection like strep throat. Um, we know that it's part of a broader category of conditions called PANS, Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric 
uh, syndrome, which means that just about anything can trigger it. Other types of infections, um, like a mycoplasma or a Lyme, um, and in some kids, the triggers can be non-infectious as well, but the, the common theme you see is that uh, an acute event is triggering this very rapid onset of these neuropsychiatric symptoms because their brains are inflamed. Unbelievable. And Tim, um, how did you become aware of this and why did you want to highlight this disorder? Well, this is a very common story uh, that we hear. I ended up at a, uh, a PANDAS conference in uh, 2013 mm -hmm. and I met parents. And the common story I kept hearing, uh, like Dr. Spars, is that um, these parents can have a neurologist, an immunologist, a rheumatologist, a pediatrician, and a psychiatrist all say that these kids have, one, this disorder, and two, they need a treatment. Mm -hmm. And the insurance company will deny coverage. So that was really my all-in moment. Why are they, why is this, one, controversial, and two, why are these uh, this desperately ill children being denied insurance coverage? And you titled your, your film, My Kid Is Not Crazy, because I, I, from what we gather from the, the little um, clip we showed, a lot of those kids, I mean, they're having nervous breakdowns, um, OCD, these tics, as you mentioned. I mean, I, I can't imagine as a parent what it's like to see your kid go to bed normal and happy and healthy and wake up like that. It's devastating. It's truly devastating for them. But I think what's even worse, and even here in Pittsburgh, um, if, a, if a parent were to go to Children's Hospital here in Pittsburgh, um, they may not know what to do with this. It's an excellent hospital, right. but we need to open up more of this conversation. And so uh, we hope uh, with a film like this, we, we have a conversation about this in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. involving this Children's Hospital. Maybe they invite Dr. Sweeto here uh, for Grand Rounds and really, really start this conversation so that these kids can get the treatment they need. Can you tell us more about Dr. Sweeto? Uh, who, who Dr. Sweeto sure. is? Sure. Dr. Sweeto um, is, uh, uh, works at the NIH. Um, and investigated this, and she came across this back in the 1980s, actually, and wrote a white paper about this. Uh, through the years, she's uh, brought this disease uh, along and, and information about this and in initial research. Um, then controversy kind of hit. Yeah. There was like, we can't necessarily, you know, you might not link a strep infection, let's say, that happened four or five weeks ago with um, this rapid onset OCD that happened. Uh, you know, maybe three, four, five weeks later. It's, it's tough to pull those two together. Right. Okay, now the strep infection's gone. And it, it's been long gone for a while, so now it's really, really tough to prove. So that's sort of where the, the controversy, controversy lies in, is can you prove that strep was the original trigger? And I think she's done an excellent job, along with researchers from Columbia, University of Minnesota, Stanford, and the University of South Florida. They've really tied this together in a nice little bundle. And uh, Dr. Spar, I understand that you were one of the very few if, the, if not the only uh, doctors treating this in Western PA. And so how is that, how is that being handled? Um, yeah, so there has been a difficulty for parents in this area to find physicians who um, are well-versed in pandas and, and willing to, to treat and, and to be educated about it. So um, I do wind up getting um, some pretty, um, some desperate parents who not only are going through the struggle with their child having this horrible illness, but who have been turned away by doctor after doctor um, and are sort of wandering in the desert as these medical refugees. Um, and all they want is just a basic diagnosis and treatment and just finding something that can help. basic um, has, has been so hard for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so what are you providing for them as far as treatment goes? Is there, mm -hmm. is there a treatment out there for this? Right. Um, so uh, initial treatment with um, pandas and pans um, is to, um, to do a little bit of a workup and then to start um, antibiotics and anti-inflammatory type medicines. Um, if the child has gotten sick recently, something as simple as ibuprofen can make a big difference. Really? Wow. Yes. Um, for the more severe cases and the, and the further along cases um, where they've maybe been mi misdiagnosed and it's been a little while, then um, one of the most effective treatments is something called IVIG, uh, which is uh, intravenous immunoglobulin. It's basically um, a, a transfusion of, of immune cells into the child. Um, and that can make a tremendous difference, unfortunately. Um, it's very difficult to get the insurance companies to pay for As that. Yeah. Um, and so I spend a good amount of my time 
battling with insurance companies for these kids to get this treatment that they need so well, badly. And you know how important it is being a mom with three children with it. Thank you both for talking about this and raising some awareness here for our viewers. But if you want to come and learn more and see the full film, My Kid Is Not Crazy, at an event tonight, it's going to be at Pamela's in Squirrel Hill. It's called Pancakes for Pandas in the PM. That dinner starts at 5 o'clock tonight at Pamela's Diner, and the movie starts at 7 at the Jewish Community Center. The event is free, but donations are welcome and will benefit pandas and pans advocacy and support.